Hi, it's Felix here. I figured we were about due for a video. I am sitting here at the lab. This is the set uh, at which I not only do all of my, my work, whether it's on the computer, doing writing or inventing or whatever, but uh, certainly also where I perform uh, for all of these Zoom shows that I get to do, which uh, has been a blast. I've really enjoyed that. I perform segments as, as short as five minutes, a little Zoom bomb, if you will, and run in and perform a little bit of, of mentalism magic and uh, make a few jokes and then scamper off and kind of lift everybody's spirits. I know that Zoom is getting a little monotonous for some folks, but I also produce these uh, variety shows that I've been doing and I'm able to bring in other entertainers if that's something that people are interested in. I have been doing some couple of Zoom shows with my partner, Athena, who is a, uh, a former principal Las Vegas showgirl and still every bit of showgirl, you can take the girl out of the show. Uh, and that's that's been a blast. We've really enjoyed that. We've done a full two camera shoot uh, here at the lab. We live together and uh, so I'm able to perform a little and MC a little and then introduce her and she performs and she's been giving some talks and that kind of thing. So that's, that's certainly one of our offerings. Uh, and I do full hour-long shows. Uh, I think the, the average in the corporate market seems to be around 30, 40 minutes. Uh, so that's just to catch up on that, but uh, this is where I spend a good amount of my time. The other time that I spend is very often in my wood shop doing some, some other stuff, and that's why uh, it's, it's one of the reasons that I created a, an account to kind of share the artwork side of what I do uh, the things that I create, uh, and that is over at buymeacoffee.com, uh, which is just slash Felix, I think, if you want to find me. Uh, but that's uh, that's been a, a really enjoyable way for me to connect with people and to share some of the, the visual art that I do as opposed to the performance stuff, which took over my life for the last 20 years for sure. Um, while I've been performing for 40 years, I spent a lot of time as a visual artist, and it was right around 2000 that I really had to make a decision to, to go one way or another, because uh, I was kind of enjoying some good success on, on with both of those hats, and I had to pick one. And the spotlight called out a little more loudly than the art supplies, uh, but not so loud that I that I ever stopped creating. So I'm still creating and I'm still sharing that, but I'm doing that uh, with the, the kind of privately, I suppose, with memberships and, and supporters over at buymeacoffee.com. So you're certainly welcome to visit me over there. In fact, I picked up something uh, to share with people at buymeacoffee.com uh, for the people who become members. I'm doing some extra things. I'm sending them some uh, artwork on occasion or, uh, you know, we have one-on-one -on -one uh, Zoom sessions or Skype sessions or telephone calls and uh, I, I picked these up to be able to share with folks over there because I have uh, no other use for, for merch really while I'm not performing on stages and uh, this is a little pin. I will put a little close up here so that you can see the artwork but uh, I think I'm funny. So these little pins, these little pin back uh, badges are being sent to the people who become members of my coffee club. And in the meantime, I thought I'd tell you a little story while we're at it. And this is the kind of thing that, that I really intend to share uh, over on the Buy Me A Coffee. And I'll, I'll be doing a lot of that by video or uh, photographs and, and short essays. I, I suspect that you're familiar with the way I write and that can get a little complicated. And I apologize for that. I, I think in, in very strange ways. So the videos might be a preferred way to, to share some of that, but uh, looking at me and looking at my background, you can probably tell that I was one of those kids who was heavily influenced by Robert Ripley, P.T. Barnum. Uh, I was the kid who was going to the library and looking up the Guinness Book of World Records or Robert L. Ripley's books. And uh, that's what I related to most. And that I suppose really stuck with me to a degree that the idea of having a library that included uh, artifacts from all over the world and and shrunken heads and and all of the weird crazy stuff uh, that that really stuck with me and and like I said as you can tell by looking behind me 
I, I worked on that for, for many, many years. And I collected a, a lot of really unusual and fantastic exhibits. Uh, things. They're just things, but uh, some of them are, are pretty interesting things and they have a lot of stories. And I'm bringing that up because I wanted to let you know that I changed my mind about a good portion of that and and I feel like it's important for me to describe what that means and the why behind it. Um, there are a lot of the artifacts that I became very fond of. In fact, uh, I can tell you that my experience and observations, uh, anything that is created as religious artwork or sacred artwork is done so with enough passion that you can tell by looking at the work that there was a lot of effort and skill that went into these things. And, and very often, more often than not, a lot of the uh, religious themed or spiritual themed or sacred objects that are created by artists are uh, infrequently signed. Uh, the, there's no attribution to who was the creator of some of these objects. Nevertheless, they're, they're wonderful and beautiful, and I, I find them very attractive. And I used to have more than I have now. And there, there's a very specific reason for that, and that's what I'm getting at. Uh, I became well and good. Uh, I became very convinced that certain objects, particularly those that have... Uh, someone has assigned some kind of sacred value to them. Um, they don't belong in my collection. Um, I don't, it's, it's not something that uh, I should own or keep from anybody else or, or put in my, my little display bubble here. Uh, those, those should be where they were created. Uh, those should live where they were created for the reason they were created. And, uh, and so I have returned some, some objects. I've, I've sent some objects uh, all the way across the world. I, uh, I spent a fortune on shipping, but it became important for me to know that these objects are where they belong. And uh, so I've reduced my collection by quite a bit. I do still have some things and I had to come up with my strict rules as to uh, what what criteria an object has to meet in order to be something that uh, I can morally, ethically uh, keep in in my collection and appreciate. Um, and you know, one such such object, excuse me, I uh, I pulled this one off the wall to share with you because I, you know, gazing over my collection, I thought, well, you know, what what is something I have that illustrates this this point and uh, that is this object so I, I do still have this I am keeping this uh, you can see that uh, this comes down well below the frame that's part of the object here this is a, uh, a fighting knife from from a, a nomadic tribe in North Africa uh, this is handmade uh, I can hold it up a little clearer here and when I watch this back before I publish it for you, uh, if, if that's at all unclear, I'll take a still and, and lay that over so that, so that you can see it. But um, I think you can see it well enough. I have another secret about this thing too, and I'll, I'll share that with you in a moment. But uh, this was given by one of the, the higher ranking individuals who was part of the Mboro tribe. And uh, this was given to my friend Scott, who uh, brought it home I don't know how he got it home to America, uh, considering, well, look at it. Uh, but uh, it did come back to America, and he gifted it to me. Um, I treat this object with a, a great deal of respect. I created the framing for it, the display for it. I made sure that uh, uh, the two names for that tribe are here in the, the description panel, along with uh, my friend Scott's name, of course. Um, but uh, this this is quite an object, and I can tell you much more about that, uh, or about this object. But uh, for now, it's it's just serving for me to illustrate that uh, because this was a gift, because the person who gave it to Scott knew that it was going to go back to America with Scott, um, I, I I feel like it's okay, and there is a possibility that I could change my mind about that and and really decide that maybe it should go back to Africa, but. For now, I feel like I'm staying within the rules that I've set for my uh, 
my collection. Uh, the secret I was going to tell you about that is that this frame, <laughs> this frame has a story of its own. This is a small, a very scaled down version. It was a mock-up that I created for uh, the celebrity athlete John Elway. Uh, he has a very, very huge version of this frame in his home that I created. Uh, and it was particularly the liner that we were, I was working with his, his decorator to create this liner so that it would go with other object, objects in his home uh, and meet her standards for the decoration. So this, the, the, very unrelated to the subject, they happen to look good together and so that's, how, that's why I finished it this way, but I thought you'd find that interesting and funny. Nevertheless, uh, this will continue to hang here at the lab and, uh, and I, I think I feel okay about it. As for the other objects, uh, I, I have made sure that things have gone back to, uh, I sent some pieces to Jerusalem, uh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, I think that's all, maybe one more, but nevertheless, I believe, uh, I trust the, the recipients. I did quite a bit of research before I sent things back, but uh, I believe those objects are where they belong now. And I'm pleased with that. I'm going to wrap this up, but uh, I would love to see you over at the buymeacoffee.com and, uh, and I would love to have your support. It really helps me be a creator in these uh, theater dark times. I haven't had a whole lot of work, so uh, I've been certainly producing more work and, and struggling to kind of pivot to be able to do the Zoom shows and that kind of thing until our theaters and stages open back up. Uh, but I've had a, a struggle, I suppose, and, and uh, certainly turned back to my artwork just to, just to kind of cope and to, to use the catharsis that, that uh, that experience delivers for me. And uh, I'll, I'll enjoy sharing with you. I have a whole bunch of boxes behind me, and I like to say, when people ask me uh, about my set, I like to say, well, I'm, I'm packed and I'm, I'm ready to go. As soon as we open things back up, I can jump straight on a flight and go see you in person. So uh, that is kind of a fact. However, there are other things in these boxes that they, they often appear with me on stage and they're kind of there just in case, no pun intended, but I like that. Um, they're there to offer something more to share with an audience should uh, an occasion arise. I, I do uh, a lot of my shows in, in magic, we call it jazz magic. Um, in comedy, we would say improv. Uh, it's a little of both. So those, those, these are objects that are available for occasions where that might work. And uh, I will be happy to share over on the buymeacoffee.com, I will be sharing what is in these boxes. Uh, I, some of them are very dedicated to very specific objects. Some of them uh, are not necessarily catch-alls. Uh, this one example is the, the one that I, I do travel with. Uh, that and, and a set of other bags that, uh, that go with it. But uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward to sharing that. I'm doing some restoration on a couple of antiques. I'll be sharing that and uh, then I'm doing some original artworks and I will be sharing that. So I would love to have you, uh, and, and definitely I want to have your interaction. If you're gonna come over there, you're, you're certainly welcome to be a fly on the wall and just kind of peer at me and whatever it is I'm doing. But uh, I also love the interaction and I love to hear what people, what stories you wanna hear or uh, what you wanna see me create, challenges that you wanna give me, whatever. So. Thank you very much for spending the time with me. I really appreciate having your friendship, uh, even if it's just virtual. That's kind of the state of things for all of us, everybody, everywhere, still for the time being, but thanks again.